going to talk a little bit about the um, commercial office and retail market on the Sunshine Coast. These stats are sort of towards the back end of last year. Um, there hasn't been too many changes. Um, we have certainly haven't seen too many um, obvious drops in um, values. Uh, there may have been slight sort of softening in, in multipliers, but this is a good comparison between, so it's good to sort of compare the two coasts together. Most alarming things is that vacancy rate, which, which is really concerning. Um, it's, uh, you can see there it's up to close to 17%, um, you know, in, in comparison to uh, Brisbane, which has had some issues with uh, their vacancy rate. Um, that is a little bit concerning, um, sort of forecasting forward uh, as to what will happen um, with uh, capital values. Obviously, there'll be some sort of imbalance there between supply and demand. And then when you couple that with, you know, the, the COVID issue, um, there, there could possibly be less demand for office space. Rents uh, at uh, 335, so mid threes to mid fours um, for the A grade. And in comparison to the Gold Coast, which is obviously slightly higher. Um, and yeah, obviously net rents are pretty much the same in, in comparison um, to the Gold Coast. This incentive levels, they haven't really moved too much, to be honest, since the GFC. They've sort of hovered around the, um, the 20%. Typically, you're getting three month uh, leasing up or rent free period with a three year term and typically, you know, five to six months with a, with a, a five year term. So that's been pretty consistent. We might actually find that incentives to, uh, are on the increase and anecdotally um, that probably is the case a little bit, um, we, you know, post coronavirus. Uh, this was sort of a survey that was put out to some industry people um, and they've sort of listed here 10 potential changes that, that um, they envisage might occur to the commercial office market. Um, I'll just run through them, shifting how much office space is required. Um, as COVID-19 has forced a lot of businesses to, to look at different models, being working from home, um, some businesses may actually go back into an office, some may partly go or go back into an office but then have some of their staff working from home, so therefore the need for as much office space might diminish. Some may not go into an office, back into an office at all, purely from a cost point of view, but also they've been exposed to um, other platforms which allow them to, to still be able to do their business um, from a home-based um, position. Our companies to decentralise and diversify. Satellite offices, we've We've always, you know, we've always sort of modelled ourselves on, on that and it's, it seems to have worked reasonably well. Um, but I think, again, some businesses have been exposed to that and it's a cost-effective way, you know, to be able to expand and grow and still have, um, you know, have those satellite offices in place, if you like. This is an interesting one. More companies to allow pets. As in from home or like No, in, in an office. Yeah. I think now, more, more than ever, business owners and business in general are a lot more in tune with um, people's overall health, mental health. I think having, having pets and having an environment um, that just softens it a bit is a, is, is a good thing to do. Um, probably more, uh, number four, more of an emphasis on healthy, smart buildings in, in high demand. Again, it's, I think it's all built around just that overall general, general health of well-being of staff. Um, companies to include fitness equipment. I'm not sure how that works. You could sit on a stationary bike while you type away on your computer. But offices closer to the local shops rather than in the CBD. And that's sort of based on concept that people now don't, you know, with social 
distancing and just the whole coronavirus, uh, probably feel safer in a smaller, you know, rather than being a CBD with half, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, just to be offset a little bit in the suburbs, um, closer to local shops, parking is a lot better there as well and a lot cheaper as opposed to being in the CBD. Um, uh, plants and greenery in offices, which, yeah, that's sort of starting to come, come back into, uh, you know, uh, high demand now in, in office space. Just trying to, again, trying to soften, soften the areas up, make people feel more comfortable at work. Uh, more emphasis on spaces for collaboration um, rather than just, you know, everyone in set individual offices. I mean, that's probably been, been going on for longer than what coronavirus has, um, has come about. That was one of them. Co-working spaces in less demand. And that's an interesting one because that was a really fast moving business pre-COVID-19, and it still might be, this is just someone's opinion, but they were popping up all over the place, the, the co-working office spaces, but because, you know, you're, you're basically throwing lots of people into a shared space, it probably, that actually may have a bit of a, a struggle um, coming out of this. People may just, you know, shy away from going into those types of um, shared spaces. And um, yeah, more functions and celebrations. So um, yeah, I think it's probably made everyone everyone reset a little bit and, and think about, I guess, what's, what is important and just trying to, um, you know, focus on um, some of the more meaningful things at work as well.